John, it's that time of the month again, and I don't mean that in a weird way. I mean, <laughs> it's been four weeks since we've spoken, and it's time to do another show. And I don't think it's come soon enough, considering how much is going on. I can't keep up with it. That makes two of us. You know, you take it... I get on a flight a lot. As soon as I get on a flight and, you know, a couple of days away and not checking my usual pathways of of intel, and then it just goes it's like a floodgate steaming at me. So I think with all of the um, the financial stuff that's been bubbling, I think let's go there first, and you can tell us what you've been doing, what you've learned, what you understand, and then we'll touch on a few other bits and pieces afterwards. I, I kind of feel like your information is a bit more relevant and important so let's jump in there first if you're okay with that yeah yeah that's kind of you to say it's all you know dave before we get started i just want to say and i, I think i speak for the, the majority of the lion's share of the audience i always enjoy these catch-ups with you because it's just two nice guys having a conversation but also sharing information that people need and uh we have a nice chemistry and i talk about the time of the month being weird we have a nice chemistry that i enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy. and um and i think that comes across and, and and it's nice to be able to do something we love that benefits the people at the same time so it's yeah 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 you know i completely heart-heartedly agree so you know, equitable good. all right yeah, yeah we were it, you're going you're going all right schmuck you're on okay so here we go <laughs> here we go um let me share the screen with you in a second i'm not let me know where do i start here all right let me start with this let me know when you can see it. We got that, yeah. Washington. Okay, so this just this came out, folks, hot off the press uh, a couple hours ago. OAN is reporting that the House of Representatives has failed to pass a stopgap government funding bill that would have kept funding at current levels until March 28th of next year. The bill also included a provision requiring proof of citizenship nationwide for U.S. voter registration, paper ballots, proof of citizenship, like President Trump has been saying for years. The spending bill uh, failed. Ben, spending bill failed a 200 vote. Here's what's interesting, David: 206 Democrats and 14 Republicans opposed it, while 199 Republicans and three Democrats voted in favor of it. So usually you see it swing the other way. So they're letting this whole thing drop on the deep state for October, which is uh, really exciting. So, so this basically, this basically says that all of this talk about all of these other immigrants that have been piling over the border are going to be allowed to vote. Now they're saying unless you have a U.S. citizen proof, a registered card, you can't vote. So their plan of being able to swamp the voting booths with pro-democratic um, ticks and boxes has failed, which is great. Well, yes, and it goes further. I just caught this this morning on my news feed. After I'm done with you, I got to prep my weekly wrap up that we do. And this is perfect timing to give people a sneak preview. New York City is now paying $4,000 to illegals to leave. They're not paying them to leave as they did to pay them to come in. So that tells you Trump is pulling the strings behind the scenes the entire time. Where are they sending them? Does that Has that been released yet? I, I it, it didn't specify. I'm thinking out of the country. It's to me, it's another sign of Jasara, to be honest, because that's they have to go back to their home country. So he's prepping a narrative, giving solutions of what he's already done, which David segues beautifully into my uh, my next share with you. Since you brought that up, let me show you something here. I showed this on our our fellow brother uh, Nick Veniamen's show a couple of days ago, and so I want to make sure you get proper uh, posterity for it. So this is Nelson Chamiso, you know, in Zimbabwe. He's just yeah. come out with this a few days ago. Look at this, David, right here. 20 actions for the citizens of Zimbabwe in his first 100 days of office. Does that sound familiar? Sounds a lot like Trump yeah, to me. Exactly. That's what I was oh, thinking. Didn't, didn't Elon Musk say recently this month that Starlink is now in Zimbabwe? Yeah. Newsflash, it was in July. I remember we talked about that. They prepped it behind the scenes before the elections they knew would be corrupt like the rest of the world. Countries copy each other. Here's more proof. Elon Musk is now openly admitting he's working with Zimbabwe. So we also know Trump is working with them as well as he has the whole time. Chamis is always wearing gold uh, pocket squares and gold ties. He's putting out lots of you know comms about gold, just like Trump. But there's 20 promises he's making because I think like Trump, he's already done it. Now, here's the key that everybody's going to want to know. The main thing I highlighted in red, remove bond notes. He's removing them out of the old system and tucking them into the Zig dollars all one currency gold backed. That's the thing people have to remember. And then, of course, the aforementioned Starlink. It's got a lot of stuff here about education, restoring sanity to the education system, removing the curriculum, 
But now what President Trump said, he's going to remove the Department of Education, a lot of three-letter agencies. So you can see they're mirroring each other in their, in their dialogue for what they're about to do. That's very interesting. Funny, I'm, I'm going to mention it now, John, sure. um, because <clears throat> there's a new app. This is a, I was going to make a recording of it, but then I thought, well, judging by where we're going to go out, sometimes they flag it for copyright and then the video gets taken down. But the new episode of Top Gear, but it's the Amazon one, it's called The Grand Tour. So you got Clarkson and his two pals, James May, and um, what's the other one called? Hamster, they call them. Um, they basically go to Zimbabwe. And it's the final one they're doing. So they've been on the road 20 years, driving all over these countries, doing these amazing trips. They're very entertaining. I love them. So they go sure. to Zimbabwe and they're driving across Zimbabwe and they stop. And he goes into this um, center of the town and he comes out with a great big bag of silver. And they mm -hmm. said, what's that? He said, that was a bag of silver. And I paid about $75 an ounce, for, uh, 75 cents an ounce for it. And wow. then they, yeah. And then later in the show, only about another three minutes later, they're sitting having a breakfast, I think. And he says, are you aware that if you dig into the soil here, you'll hit gold, platinum, silver, uranium? And he named off all of these precious metals and commodities. And Clarkson said, Zimbabwe, probably the richest um, place that we've ever been to. And he was really dropping massive hints. Now, Clarkson's quite... The outsider, he's quite anti-government, anti-speed cameras. He doesn't like all the government restrictions and rules. So for anybody watching, if you haven't watched that show, go watch them drive across Zimbabwe. What a out outstandingly beautiful country it is. I was stunned by the sceneries with the drone shots and how it changes. Um, but he was dropping big hints about what's going to happen in Zimbabwe and what they have in the ground there that's just waiting to um, to fulfill their destiny. It was a brilliant show. David, it's, it's funny so funny that you said that because I just had a friend of mine, Isaac, a couple days ago after the show we did with Nick, because I was talking a lot of Nick about Zimbabwe, you know, as I mentioned, showing him a lot of the same overrubs. And my friend Isaac said, you got to see this show on uh, the channel you were talking about, the, you know, the pay, right, on, you know, yeah, Amazon. right on Amazon, the, the prime channel, uh, what you were saying, same exact thing you're saying. He's like, they're showing how wealthy Zimbabwe has always been behind the scenes, how it's been hidden, covered up in corruption, mired in that, like the rest of the world and how much they have the, yeah. the world's, everything you and I have been talking about for years, you know, on, on other channels and now here. It, it's just finally coming to light because it's time. It's God's time for his people to be released. Let my, you know, as, as, as the plea went, Pharaoh, let my people go. We're, we're coming into that season now. But yeah, Zimbabwe's stupid rich with that. They've also got great crops, you know, for, for, uh, for harvest. And that goes into the question that I always get. What about the agro checks? Yes. The agro checks for the hundred time. Yes. They're going to be valuable. Just like the bonds. You will get a great deal on that. I don't know what the rates are with that. Um, I don't really focus on that, but I know if the Zim bonds are going to be great, I would imagine those are going to follow suit. So it's, there's a whole bunch of things tied into it. Let me jump into this, Dave, on the backs of what you just shared as perfect timing. So this was in full disclosure, but this was taken in May. This is not a recent picture as of like, you know, yesterday. This was done, uh, like I said, about what, four and a half months ago. But this was an, an article, excuse me, a billboard put up by Nelson Chamisa. And you can clearly see it says one bond note equal to one USD, one to one. So he's been dropping hints for a long time about how valuable this bond is. People still argue with me that it could never happen. No, people, you're wrong. Your mindsets haven't changed to receive it. We've been lied to, David, about everything. So why is it so hard for people to understand that there's way more wealth than we ever known? We've been taught to contend for slavery instead of the hundredfold. The whole, the whole balance of power is changing. Let me show you another one here. This is another uh, screenshot for posterity. Same idea, it just has a little bit of a different wording to it. No need for a separate account. Get up to, I think that says 6% or 5% for diaspora remittances, probably to exchange in the bank. But the point is, it says one bond note, one to one USD. So they've been dropping comms all the time. Just people are not, not really listening. These, these are posted on billboards in, in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe as of May, of May of this year. Wow, that's very encouraging, isn't it? Extremely, extremely. I Let me to, see if I have, I have one to remember more thing. I hidden mine. I keep hiding them and forgetting where I hid them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't lose uh, don't 
don't lose those, man. Um, let me see if I can, I'm going to, you just have to bear with me a second, folks. It's not a seamless uh, transition here. Let me, um, I got to go back to my web here. So just bear with me a second. No problem, man. Take your time. Well, I just want to get to the, uh, oh, I guess it's not going to let me do that, but I had a, I had a, I apologize. I had a, uh, a link up here. I must've taken it down. But what I was going to say is that uh, this week in our telegram, uh, the, the gist of it, Bank of Iraq building in Baghdad is slated to be the tallest building in the Middle East. I think we've touched on that before. I was going to show you that article, um, but, but people can go on the Nick video and see you as well. I think I sent it to you. Yeah. And, so the building, the building, the world's top, tallest bank uh, and, building. Yeah, it's the tallest building in Baghdad, and, ba and Iraq is set to be uh, basically Dubai 2.0, and you know this because you've traveled. So yeah. what's interesting on top of that, if that weren't enough, is they said it's slated for completion in 2024, which means it's already happened. They're ready that's, to go. That's a very interesting thing because Baghdad, it's an absolutely ancient city, whereas Dubai is just man-made. It's, what, 20, 30 years old. So right. the atmosphere there is very, very different. And if it does sort itself out with all these little insurrections and insurgents and all these different groups blowing each other up in marketplaces, you know, it, it'll be a fantastic place. Because back in the day, you know, they wrote stories about how beautiful it was, how advanced the medicine was. Um, they were the first people to um, understand about the appendicitis issue, appendectomies that performed it successfully. And medicine was so far advanced in the 12th and 13th century that the um, people thought it was witchcraft when they got it back to Western Europe. So I'm excited for that. Iraq's a place I'd love to go back to. Um, what I saw was in the middle of a, a war zone. Yeah. It wasn't very pleasant. So, but I always found the people pleasant and nice. You know, the average person on the street doesn't want to have any of these issues or problems. No. All they want to do is get home safely, earn a few local, whatever the currency is, in this case, dinar, dinar yeah. uh, feed the families, John, and just, you know, living in peace. So that's great news for Iraq. How's, um, what's he called? I always forget his name. Sadami? No, what's the president? Oh, Sudani, uh, Prime Minister Sudani. Sudani. Yeah, he's he, good. Thanks for asking, because that was my next point. Now, before we just hold that thought for a second, just to back yeah. up to a second to just add a couple important things. Uh, so, yeah, so the other thing is, you, you know, you're into medicine or natural healing medicines like ivermectin and HCQ and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what's interesting with Iraq also is they're the, this is a reprise point we talked about before, but it, I think it's, it's um, beneficial to bring it up again. They are the world's largest supplier of phosphorus. So yeah. that's used in a lot of minerals and metals and mining and, you know, Manufacturing, huge. manufacturing, yeah, it's got endless uses. So, if anybody's in phosphorus for anything, it comes pretty much out of the ground there. Uh, Sudani is in an interesting place. They they have this corrupt speaker Ali Alak, who they're getting rid of. He's a holdover from the Maliki regime from 2010. Um, they're using age as the reason to get rid of him. Boy, where does that sound familiar? Over here, anywhere? Some uh, clone Biden, in by chance? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's one thing. Um, he's getting pressure to replace the speaker because you need when you're going to come back to an international stage as a currency, you have to do a number of things. Uh, you have to pass reforms, taxes and tariffs. You know, the borders have to be addressed just like here. You have to have a correct speaker. That's a uh, Iraqi native, not a corrupt Iranian proxy. You're also seeing Sudani removing the troops, the U.S. troops out of Iraq. He's actually doing it. Nobody thought he would do it. See, the IMF and the useless nations and all these three layer agencies are basically daring Sudani to do it. And he's actually delivering because he was chosen, um, you know, to do that. There was a gentleman that some in the in community may have know the late great Benny Wilson. I had a chance to talk to him a few times during the pandemic and he had a podcast and he foretold years ago, he said, there's going to be four prime ministers before it gets done. As Kim Clement said, the nothing, 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 something. Sudani is number four. And he said it would be a Mexican looking gentleman, which if you look at Sudani with the must, his facial structure looks like he could be Hispanic in some fashion. <laughs> well, I mean, it is what it yeah. is. It's fine. I mean, it's just what it is. Um, it's like we're both Irish, you know, it just, it, <laughs> you are what you are. But, yeah. um, but he would be a, a Mexican looking gentleman who would be the one to get it done. And we see it's, it's Sudani stepping in. So what we need to see him do is come is basically get rid of the, uh, the old speaker, appoint the new one. They've been stalling. That needs to get done. I, I know they're timing it for effect, like always. Big shock. This stuff is planned out 
long years in advance, right? No surprise to our viewers. Uh, then he's got to basically just push everything into parliament. We're watching Iraq. I think they just did a bit, excuse me, I'm sorry, Israel just did a big hit on Hezbollah today. Uh, they did an airstrike. Well, but that's setting up for Iran is where I'm getting at. We're, and then, we're going to get back to that because that's something on my list, but carry on. Yeah, no, I want to hear what you have to say on that and other things. And then the other big news that happened yesterday, and you and I touched on it last month, uh, right on schedule, um, I know that JP Morgan said it, but our camp had also been saying it for months as well, because we we don't we watch the news, but we also go to God and try to get it more from a divine prophetic standpoint. And we believed a couple months ago that the, the Fed was going to cut the rate point 50 basis points, and they did. And a lot of people were saying, no, it's going to be 25. I said, no, it'll be 50, mainly because God showed us that. But number two, they couldn't do 25. That'd be too little. 75 would be too much. Right. So just right. The other thing is they're fudging the numbers about the economy, the unemployment, the rate of inflation, which is just a tax on the old dollar debt instrument. So it's right down the middle. And so they're not going to tell the public they lied. Shocker. When would they ever tell the truth? They need to go see that movie Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey. <laughs> and, yeah. and then so what that does is that basis point creates a diversion away from the lying numbers. So they're going to try to steer people to the market and how great it's doing. But when people go to the grocery store, the gas station, pay their bills, get food, they see the hyperinflation that's taking suit. Back to you. Um, I was going to touch on this, this, um, these exploding pages and, and walkie talkies now, John, because this is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I haven't, I've looked at some of the footage, but I got I, this, this seemed to have touched the wrong button with me. And I'll tell you why is because the first thing I heard about it was a couple of people were sending me videos when I was traveling, getting in and out of an airport. I couldn't watch anything. Then I saw an interview with a guy who's obviously very um, pro-Jewish, uh, pro-Israel rather, and he says he was giggling and laughing at these people being blown up by pages. And that's the wrong way to be. Look, where your job as a reporter is to report on what the truth is. You can express your preference, but you can't laugh at somebody else's death. You know, these guys, they haven't been... Here's the thing, John. I don't believe in this execution style. You know, there was no evidence presented, no trial. You didn't have a chance to say, well, actually, I'm not a Hezbollah terrorist. It's just Israel are now this Mossad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the technology they've employed is very, very clever. I mean, holy shit, how clever is that? But I just think it's very unjust that they're pushing the detonation button on people that they consider guilty. And I would certainly question their right to do that because of what they've been doing in, in Gaza in this area. I'm not pro-Israel and I'm not pro-Palestinian. I'm pro-people. And I think everybody deserves a chance because as many many a man has died in prison or been executed wrongly, the British government were one of the worst for that, and the US on the death sentence on death row. They executed a lot of innocent people. And then they did it to the walkie-talkies. But it... it, it makes you think okay so what did they do did they intercept a whole shipment of container of thousands of these walkie talkies and pages i didn't even think anybody used pages anymore but apparently right. they do it out there so yeah. now they went into walkie talkies how far is this going to go my worldwide question to everybody is have mossad and the zionist regime managed to infiltrate many other electrical products which have a detonation explosion should they try I mean, imagine if they've got into the iPhone manufacturing or the, or the Samsung Galaxy or the laptop business. You know, and most people have either got a um, Microsoft or Mac. But if they're exploding pages and blowing up walkie talkies, how far is that technology gone? And how many other electrical items have they managed to infiltrate the security system and the manufacturing process? Mm -hmm. Unless these people, they just sold them all locally. I don't know the truth, John, but it really concerns me that has so many serious things to underline about the safety, security, future um, security of people. If if the Mossad is told to do that by the Zionist regime from Benjamin Netanyahu, I think we all need to be worried because if you go online and say anything and they get your cell number, you know? My, well, yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. I, one of the, I've been thinking about this since it came out a couple, what, a couple days ago. Um, do you think that's sort of a narrative for the cyber attack we know they're going to pull next month? Well, 
It could absolutely be that way, John. I, I thought this is an ingenious way of being able to reach people that they just want to silence. You know, there's there's thousands of them. And if you go online and start saying anything against Ben Benji Boy and all of his gang of criminals, they'll explode your phone. You know, it's ingenious. And it's very hard to prove who did it. How are you going to prove who did it? The evidence has exploded. They're going to trace that back of microscopic amounts of some form of tiny. All you need is a tiny bit of C4, you know, and the right signal that just, that's it, history. But it could well be. This could be the form of cyber attack because if you think about it, a cyber attack is what? When they take out all the communications and um, stop everybody from being there, get online, all the utilities, all the software, all the computers all go down. If that's being put in a manufacturing process and deliberately put in place, it is a serious, a serious security risk. And we know the possibility of doing these things. It's not out of their grasp or out of their reach to be able to reach inside, especially when we've looked at over 85% of the U.S. Senate all have Israeli passports as a second passport, considering they're not from Israel. They don't have any Jewish connections. They haven't married into a Jewish family. Why are all these U.S. senators all holding U.S. passports? And if he even goes further, I mean, if you want to go into the the whole Ukraine thing, why they all voted to send trillions of dollars out there, it's because it all goes out there. It gets cleaned through, let's say, uh, infrastructure contracts and, and oil contracts and new machinery. We need new fridges. We need new everything, roads, sewage systems, electrical power line grids, internet grids. We'll send you the money because you'll be back in a few months to do all the work. So all of that money gets siphoned back into the U.S. through these senators, um, hidden secret accounts. And what they're doing with it, I think, I think they're changing all of the old fiat dollars, buying things that they can actually sit on until the transition from the Great Reset, which which will still have value, such as stocks and shares. Global and, reset, by the way, not great reset. We want to be careful about global, that. Global, yeah. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me, mate. I've okay. read that way too many times, obviously. No, you're well, fine. So, yeah, I think they're doing that. They're, they're buying up crypto. I know they're buying up Ripple. That's been selling very well. A lot of the big ones, Morgan Stanley, have put their hands very deep in the pockets to get Ripple. Mm -hmm. And I think it could all be tied in, in this whole... Because if they've got that technology and they can do it there, what, what, where, what makes you think they can't do it in in Oklahoma or Tennessee or somewhere where there's a great big hydroelectric power station that's driving and holding back. Oh, or, you know, the Hoover Dam. Imagine if the Hoover Dam goes out. There's not that much water behind there, but there's other um, infrastructure setups like this throughout the US, the US, North America, Canada, and worldwide. You know, the Gorges Dam in China, mm -hmm, flip a switch, mm -hmm. blow that up, bang, gone. Floods the entire place. And they're very ingenious people. The Israelis, very smart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Being underestimated. So there's my 10 cents and all of that and how it ties in. But it was a good, good question, John, about the infrastructure going down because it, it did hit me like that. How far does it go? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on real quick is, I, you know, it's kind of a kind of a disparate kind of a thing, but they kind of, like you said, interconnect. I think President Trump is behind this in the aspect of the Patriots to make it look for the, this is a wake up operation, right? So we know all this, our, most of our followers know all this, but there's a whole lion's share of people out there don't have a clue about what's going on. You know, they only know yeah. what they have access to, what they actually believe, cognitive dissonance and the like. So it's a wake up operation to bring people to the precipice, then watch Trump come out with a peace deal because he's already done in his first term that unwinds all this stuff. We also need to be praying for him because they're going to do a third and final assassination attempt next month. We just need to rebuke that in Jesus' name and get it out of there, um, and because this is truly, you know, the final battle. But I believe in the end it's already been won. Doesn't mean we need to be complacent. We need to still do our part and drive this thing as a as a collective, you know, to the very end. But yeah, you I, know, I behind a lot of it. Go ahead. I'm going to throw something out there, and again, I'm going to start by making a disclaimer <laughs> because I could well get hate messages about this. Now, my job as a journalist is to report what I see and what I observe. And I'm a Trump fan. I like the guy. I want him to be present. But I'm seriously struggling, John, to believe this second attempt. There was a man in the bushes at the golf course with a loaded yeah. AK-47 pointed at him. Okay? 
Now, you're telling me that the same organization that managed to run the entire planet and all of the darkness between the child trafficking, human trafficking, cabal activities, manipulating the Federal Reserve, sinking ships, getting everybody killed in the right spot, doing Kennedy, doing his brother, um, managed orchestrating the entire greatest hoax the world's ever done, which is probably 9-11 slash uh -huh. COVID. Mm -hmm. And they've managed to get all that done, bring us all the way through COVID, convince most of the planet to get a, an injection multiple times from a disease that you have no symptoms on. You can, you can still get it and you can still be sick, even though you've had the vaccine, but still every thousands of people are taking it every day. Right. And you're telling me that they cannot find a professional murderer, hitman, to kill one guy in a golf course. I just, I'm struggling to believe that's the case unless he truly is the world's luckiest man and is blessed by God and is, is has God's hand over him. It just doesn't make sense that they've done all, the cabal have done all of these nefarious things for all of these centuries and they can't, this is the second assassination attempt that they've missed on Trump. I love the guy. I want him to be president, but I'm I'm struggling to believe that this is actually how it, it is. I mean, maybe it happened. And again, if this is all being recreated so the public can see it, this happened mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, which a lot of like Charlie's always saying, it's already been done. This is just a recreation of something that's gone on. It's pantomime. But I find I find it very hard to take that information and find it credible for me to sit here and say, oh, my God, they try to do it again. My instinctive reaction was, oh, come on. I didn't believe that. I struggled with the first one. Some guy wandering around with a ladder and an automatic weapon right on top of the police station where they'd set up the command post stomping about. And then the FBI is saying that there's too much of a slope on the roof. We couldn't get any men up there. When you can, you know, we've seen cattle walking on higher slopes than that. So it's just astoundingly insulting to someone who's got, I think, any form of intelligence has been watching going what's going on. And I'm wondering what your take on that is. I mean, what were your thoughts when you heard about the whole story? Well, I'm glad you asked. So first of all, two things. God's hand is definitely on him. He's he's King Cyrus and David at the same time. What did King Cyrus do? He restored Israel and brought prosperity to the nations, right? And he's falling in David's footsteps. So for the Christians out there, there, there is a calling on his life, right? A, a uh, purpose for his time here in the season. That being said... I'm going to back you up and not just because I like you and not just because we, you know, we're mates, but that that's a separate issue because, you know, I also have to try to be as objective as I can as well, which admittedly is not always easy. That being said, I'm with you that in the aspect that um, we have Derek Johnson on once a month, whether you like him or not is immaterial, put that aside. I, like him. He, I, do, I, I think he's an honest man. I think he, yeah. he knows laws and orders better than anybody else I've come across. He's, he's been to Mar-a-Lago several times. So, you know, he's not like he's just giving you opinions. He's really yeah. factually based. I mean, he's he's a passionate person, but it's fueled by the truth and getting to the heart of the matter on all subjects relating to lawfare, war, laws and orders, executive orders, and then the like. So we had a conversation earlier this month on a, on a podcast as a, a, sort of those who watch our channel regularly will remember that. And we had an open, frank discussion, David, and he admitted that's not the real Trump we're seeing. All presidents, yeah. you know, you have your history buff, too. I consider you a, a student of world history, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I know that's one of the things I respect about you amongst the many. And so that being said, all presidents throughout history, even Putin has them. Chi probably has awesome. them. Yeah, doubles. Yeah. Six to seven for situations like this, assassination attempts. There's the other part of it. How do you explain how he's able to be in so many places at once? No human can keep up that pace without some type of a breakdown, especially at that age of 78. You know, even if he were 28, that would be challenging, but at 78. And so at least, you know, in the pre-med bed world. So you got to ask yourself, how is he able to be, you know, omnipotent and everywhere at once, always present? Uh, so I don't believe we're seeing the real one. I think the real one is hidden away somewhere in, I don't know if he's up in Air Force One or Camp David. That's speculation, but I don't think we're seeing the real one. I've heard that as well, and I think one of the the giveaways is the tie. I think what did he say? The real one wears oh, the, yeah. red tie. the red tie. Right. Red tie. I don't know why does he wear his tie so long. That must be a com as well. I always wondered that. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the audience knows. You know, I know there's three different knots. The winds or not, you can control the length. I've always wondered about that, but. 
I would absolutely put money on that as well, John. He's got at least two, three body doubles. I don't believe that he goes to these MA matches, these wrestling matches and fighting matches and sits there with all because, you know, they're pretty much exposed. There's no way he can control a situation with that many people in the crowd. Right. You know, but does he, these huge rallies that he goes to, you know, is everybody searched, all the metal detectors going in? I really don't know. And I he was know. at a bar last night in New York City paying for everybody's tab with Bitcoin because he's trying to make a point, not about Bitcoin, but about cryptocurrency as it relates to XRP, which is another segue, David, I'm going to get into real fast. Uh, the SEC, SEC has till October 7th to render a decision whether or not they're going to appeal the decision Judge Torres recently made, what, a month ago, five weeks or whatever it was. Don't nitpick me, folks, just, you know, <laughs> recently. And so um, I don't think they're going to appeal it. I think they're going to drop it because they know Trump's going to win. And Gary, even Trump said, when I'm back, Gary Gensler's fired. You really think Gary Gensler, who's as corrupt as they come, he's right up there in my book with Klaus Schwab or Klaus Schwab. So yeah. he's not going to wait. Just like Buffett dropped all those shares of Bank of America right before this rate cut, they knew what was coming. They always get the nod ahead of time. They always help the elites on the way out. Or there's another possibility of maybe some of those funds have been seized. That being said, Gensler's not going to wait till Trump returns in January, optically. Uh, he's going to bow out. I'll put money on it that as soon as the SEC drops the appeal, knowing Trump's going to win, days or a week later, Gensler is going to be out the back door and resign because he needs to try to cover his tracks. So there, there's just so many counter moves. And then also, I don't know if you saw this. I don't know if it was this week or last week, but Apple has been in Iraq. So they're they're wooing Iraq right now because they know the powerhouse they're about to become. So you have all these big Fortune 500 companies going to Iraq to, to do business because they're trying to get ahead of the announcement. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that at all. Whether it's a manufacturing plant, because that's where it gets interesting because they're going to need a lot of cheap labor. You know, they do a lot of these companies, John, they do a lot of manufacturing um, and hold their head offices in the Republic of Ireland, in Ireland, because Ireland gave them a really good tax incentive. For example, Stripe, they're mm -hmm. based in Ireland. That's their head office. Um, there's another, there's several companies like that large. Uh, Pfizer, one of the biggest manufacturing plants they have is in Who's Ireland. <laughs> yeah, because they had, they gave them massive tax, tax breaks. So I can see that coming. I actually bought a little bit more XRP with a few little uh, shackles I had saved up yesterday after we had a few text messages back and forth. I grabbed a few more XRP. That's what I'm focusing mine. P personal choice, personal. Uh -huh. Sure. Again, not giving you any advice what to do. We're just talking. So don't, That's you know, right. I don't think rushing out now. Mahoney said, I bought yeah. XRP. It's the only one that makes logical sense to me, John. <laughs> I don't understand any of the others, to be honest. <laughs> well, it's interesting, Dave, because I think what will happen, I'm not, you know, again, also echoing you, I'm not telling people to do anything. It's your decision. Use your discernment. We're just giving you good knowledge and information for you to use your discernmental authority, as you should self-govern. But I think what's going to happen, or I should say we as a team, to be more precise, think what's going to happen is once the SEC drops the appeal, there'll probably be an initial drop down to about 45 cents, but then it's going to go up to a dollar and then move from there precipitously uh, to that 15 to 10 to 15, 30 dollar mark, something like that. And that's where yeah. we think everything's going to take center stage. And also, since we're talking about uh, some of the warfare on, on your end, Notice that Vietnam's been very quiet. I think what they're waiting for, and I want to get your take on this, is Putin to finish the optical butt whooping of Ukraine so that he can go join Xi into doing a short two day invasion of Taiwan, which will free up the Dong and silver and Litecoin and other things. And then I think right around mid to late October, Trump's going to come out with what he already did, the peace deal. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Taiwan is one of the last places that we're just waiting for it to kick off, really. They, we just, they always seem to be one slight incident away from, all right, it's time. You know, they'll be doing military exercises in the waters and in international waters just off there. China will send a fleet, and you know, Taiwan will respond by sending their fleet out. Then the Americans are always kind of hovering around in the background saying, okay, well, what's going on here, guys? You guys need to shake hands and just, you know, part ways. Vietnam's very clever. They're sitting there peace, peacefully, quietly watching what's going on, peeking over just the top thing. Hey, what are you guys doing? <laughs> They're just peeking over, saying what's going to happen. But yeah. there's no real big love loss between Vietnam and, and Thailand and, 
and Taiwan because going back over history, these guys have always been looking over the fence and coveting the other people's possessions and their land and the manufacturing possibilities. Um, yeah, I agree. The Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam is very stealthy and strategic. They always, they always, always have. have been. Yeah. But, but that's how you know. It's like the old expression, it's the quiet ones you got to watch for. Case in point. Yeah, the, they they remind me of the the of Asia's version of China, uh, of Russia, because mm. you know what? They've been invaded several times. They've always managed to kick them out. The British tried, the French tried, the Americans tried. They kicked them all out. Japan had some success over there, but on a very short basis, just during World War II and then after the empire of of um japan was destroyed and dismantled they left obviously left before the end before the atomic weapons were deployed so they're very they're very clever and look how look at the cards and how they played the cards during the vietnam war which is still in living memory you know they're totally outplayed and out and out thought um all of these great big you know you've got to think about it, it as a great big thundering texas bull above you and then these little you know, Vietnamese, I wouldn't say rat, but a similar mammal above you, the size difference. And they were just clever. They knew the terrain better. They knew how to do it. That's right. They just waded it out, really, and did what they could to, to keep them from taking too much of the country. <laughs> so I, having been there and seen and how industrious and creative they are and patient, you know, you see one guy sitting just on a bridge. I, I was wondering what he was doing. I was watching him, and he had a tiny, tiny little um, thin piece of fishing string around his toe and i just couldn't see what he was doing and then sure enough he got a fish on the on the line on his hook and pulled it up he had a bit of breakfast so yeah, yeah. watching carefully there it, it all depends on how taiwan play this when it does kick off on the diplomatic um incident business whether they say oh very sorry or whether they start adjusting the time getting ready for war but well, i know I think, what my money's on i think that david because we're seeing the 2.0 putin and chi you know, if you know what I mean, when you know, you know, uh, it's not in their interest to do war anyway, because you'd be messing up the BRICS conference that's about to happen in October, which we'll touch on towards the end of this podcast. But, um, you know, if, 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 you know, Taiwan has all kinds of booby traps, they're very stealthy, like Vietnam, they, they've been ready and anticipating this for a while. That's why it'll be a short invasion, we believe, because if it were to go full scale, all they have to do is hit the water towers in China, they'd wipe out 100 million people like that. And that's nobody wants that. And that would be the World War Three and so forth. Uh, so you know, that's why I think Trump is going to come out and preemptively do a peace deal. Right. To just, you know, say time out. He absolutely has to, because it's another situation. I'm not sure the audience are aware of. And again, for the sake of the audience, maybe you think we're like two drunk drivers here going from currency. <laughs> we're all over Taiwan, Vietnam. Now we're back in Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but these these cool are all moment. because we haven't had a chat for a month. These are all events that are going on. So the the, the uh, NATO has been trying to get permission to launch these specialized weapons from the Ukraine into Russia. Now these are English made weapons, and so far they've had the, the permissions turned down, saying no, it's not time to fire them, and not time to fire them. But Putin's retaliated. Well, he's given a warning. He said if England. I'll do the voice. If you fire these missiles into Mother Russia, <laughs> there will be great consequences. And then what happened was the company that's made these missiles, they've got three locations in England, kind of spread out in a triangle. And uh, several nuclear submarines sailed out of Mimansk about the same time when they're all trying to do this and disappeared. And Putin's spokesperson has said, if you're launching weapons into Russia, from American-made weapons into Russia, then we're going to take out all three of your, those factories where you're making them, because we've got three stealth class nuclear submarines off the coast of the UK. And I absolutely believe them. The Brits can't find them. And they're sitting there waiting. And then what he said was, we're going to detonate and to show you we mean business, we're going to detonate a low-yield atomic weapon out at sea to show you we're not bullshitting. And then the pompous English, I don't even know his name, this new prime minister. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, his name escapes me, but yeah, I know there's Yeah, no he's brand new. He's this weird Kears or something or something named something like after a martini, something like that. <laughs> and, you know, there's idiots trying to 
you know, shrug his shoulders up and button his jacket up, getting ready, rolling his sleeves up. I mean, the British Army these days, and it's such a, a bad thing to say, it has been stripped of all its finest and best men. They've all um, got a little bit too old now because of the conflict Afghanistan and Iraq. They're all back. They're all semi-retired, all doing other jobs. And they haven't been training the new guys in the same way because of all this political correctness. You can't shout at me, Sergeant Major. I don't like being shouted at in the morning. I'm not getting up at 4.13 doing a 20-mile hike. I'm lying in bed. I've got to update my personal profile, Sergeant. I need my phone en route. <laughs> then, you know, they've stripped all of the hard, hardened combat ready soldiers. And then you've got these guys in Russia who've been brought up hard as nails, sub-zero conditions, never having any money, don't get any much money from the state, having to work and hustle and find ways around uh, problems and, and financial issues. They're in the army now because either A, they've joined up, or B, they've been drafted, but they're quite enjoying it because they're getting a square, three square meals a day, training to be something else, loads of fitness. And you should see the difference in the recruitment adverts for the Russian military services. It's night and day. They're saying, shut up, be a man. Don't listen, join army, be a man, jump out of helicopters. And then the other side of the Atlantic, they're saying, are you, you know, do you find, do you want to do, do you feel like traveling the world? And it's just not the same. You don't join the army to travel the world, the military. No. Um, it seems to me, David, before I rattle off some other financial stuff, just to tie yeah. a nice bow on what you just said, uh, I'm not obviously in Europe, but you are as a friend, and I have other friends that are in Germany and other places. We'll get to them in a second. Uh, it seems that the illegal immigration problem not, is not only rampant here in America, but it's really effectuated a lot of the whole of Europe, and and all of that is creating this problem. So even when they get proper leadership, it's kind of almost too late because of this infiltration. Yes. Now, we have to be careful that we're not going to sound Islamophobic, I think they sound or something, but I'm it's Christian. Just them. Yeah, I'm Christian. I don't want a mosque being uh, put up in front of me when there's been a Catholic church there for the last thousand years, you know? Okay. Now, I have a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot. I have several Islamic friends. We laugh and joke. We They sit there and drink with me. Don't believe this bullshit about them not drinking or eating bacon sandwiches. I've seen them do it. So, they're, you know, Islam and no drinky drinky, <laughs> that's a complete load of horse shit. I don't have a problem with that. I think they're nice people. I've been in the Middle Eastern countries. I've never had a bad experience from being treated as an infidel or, you know, an outsider. They're always welcoming and they like a bit of a laugh. They're curious about you. And people are people wherever you go, mate. They just want to earn a living and feed the families and go home and hug the children and sleep in their beds well. So we're saying that these oh. people have been deliberately brought in because they're at the military age. There's no women and children with them. They're not just being rescued from like the middle of the North Sea. They're actually going to France, loading up the boats and sailing back to England with them. But you've got France, Germany, Holland, Belgium. Northern Spain is now bad. There's nothing where I am because there's nothing here from. Nobody will give them a job. There isn't enough money from the local governments to put them up in social housing because we don't have it. They don't really do much manufacturing in this area. So, and they've already started taking over neighborhoods. Look what happened in Colorado. A huge gang of Venezuelans right. armed to the teeth with like El Rambito, the Venezuelan Rambo, taking over entire urbanizations and housing blocks and starting putting the proper, ex, ex, what do you call it, ex, um, when they're extracting money from people, extortion. Extortion, yeah. Extortion, racketeering, gambling, drugs, prostitution, forced prostitution from the the people that are living there. Police don't go in there because they're terrified and sold to stay away, just let them get on with it. So what are you as a citizen paying your taxes for if you can't sleep in your American city, town, or, or country retreat and be terrified of the police not coming when you dial 911 because, sorry to bother you, there's a lot of Venezuelans shooting AK-47s and have just dragged my 14-year-old daughter out by the hair and now they're using her as their own personal sex toy. You know, it's terrible, the stuff that's going on, yet the government failed to act the Biden administration is ignoring it. They've let these people in. It, it's the same in Europe. Sex crimes in Sweden through the ceiling. And even the Swedish people are saying, no, we don't go to that neighborhood anymore. Little Mogadishu, we call it. Nobody goes there. Please don't go in there. 
Holland, Belgium, 50% of the population in Brussels now is Islamic, and most of them are not legal. Um, Paris, I met a girl at the rented car agency. She went to Paris. She said, I was terrified. I didn't want to, I never want to go back there again. There's that many crazies sleeping on the street. It looked like something from a, a refugee film, or we thought we were in um, Islamabad. You know, when you see them all climbing on trains and sleeping everywhere. Right. It, she's, all these cities, John, are being overrun by people that don't know what the culture is. They don't speak the language. They don't have the money. They don't have the places to sleep. Uh, you know, the, the the streets are running running yellow with urine because there's no bathroom facilities sufficient for the, to treat many of these people. And plus, again, not stabbing them in the back with words. They just don't understand that, you know, OK, you've got to you can't just pee in the street that you got to you know, cause the sanitation issues. There'll be a cholera outbreak and the summer comes next year. Malaria will hit as well with them um, with Gates's new mosquitoes that people have you seen that? I been, have. I have. Catching mosquitoes with numbers tattooed on them, saying this is a, a genetically modified yeah, man GMO. made genetic geno, yeah. Well, there so, you know, it's a what massive you say is, problem. I'm sorry. What <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. What you say is mostly true about people being mostly good. That's that's true, but walls work, you know. I mean, it's throughout the Bible, we've had walls in governing different cities and different awesome. countries and continents. Walls work, and, and we really do need to shore up our infrastructure. That's why I think Trump is building that virtual iron dome over america because of the new um the new digital you know warfare and and uh you know missiles and so forth yeah so and in, speaking of germany i thought so i was going to bring them up guess who they're speaking highly about right now uh trump well <laughs> no Gibraltar, Gibraltar. iraq because they oh, yeah. actually quote iraq is witnessing progress towards the economic stability so they're telling you what's coming now What's interesting, David, on the backs of yesterday's news with the rate cut, which is a death nail, by the way, to the U.S. debt dollar instrument, as you and our audience well knows, as we've talked about ad nauseum. Silver's up above 31 bucks. As I checked a minute ago, I think it was like 31.30, 31.40, highest ever to date. Uh, Representative Bobert is uh, co-sponsoring H.R. 8785, which is tax-free acts. So they're preparing people for NASARA for not only debt forgiveness, but the removal of taxes. This includes income tax as well as property tax, tax on tips, tax on overtime. He's he's building a narrative slowly and steadily for the public to see as he takes it block by block. Um, Iraq, we talked about Sudan, he forms high level committee to align banks. This is this is part of the new digital economic asset, asset backed economy. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't know, the audience didn't know, Iraq is number nine in the world in gold buying right now. Number nine. Yeah. That's a seventy percent increase. I thought it was number. I thought it was a bit high. I thought the number seven actually, but um, Look, yeah. As a, uh, and then you have gold. It's an alt. It's 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 what twenty six. Last I checked before our podcast, twenty six twenty. So that's moving up. Look for look for gold in our opinion to move between three thousand and thirty five hundred by the end of the year, and silver probably somewhere. 75 to 150 dollars it's going to move up as gold moves up but then as it becomes we get back the gold standard globally it's it's going to run because it's the one thing that can knock out the debt and stabilize the economy we have turkey joining the BRICS, so i guess that's a good place to kind of put my last two cents for the show david which is the BRICS. we know uh what's today the 19th in about four plus weeks we've got the world's largest BRICS summit ever, over 160 nations. Putin just said this week, 34 more nations want to join. So I don't know what that number will end up being, but it'll be well over 80% of the world's population. Now that the, it's our contention, Dave, I want to see what you think. Now that the interest rate, the penny has been dropped, as you like to say over there in, in Europe, yeah. with the interest rate, that's a clear and present signal to our side. That's a death nail to the dollar, the beginning of the end, optically. So no one's going to be buying the debt except for the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor has any reserves. Another greatest Ponzi scheme concocted on the world, right? I would contest that the dollar is the worst drug that everyone has been forced to take globally over PCP and everything else. That was just one more thing. So I we strongly believe next month that BRICS is going to say, screw you, dollar. We're done with you. There's enough of us. We're going to move into, we're going to power up our countries, nationalize them in real assets, and we're going to go on our own because we have enough of an alliance. 
And it's going to be real, as Bill Holter says, real-time settlement, something real for something real, real trade, real commerce. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are. I think it's the only way forward because there's, you've got to analyze a lot of different things. For example, the U.S. real estate market now, let's take uh, New York. After COVID, when everybody just started working from home, all that commercial real estate is laying dormant, empty, nothing in there. Maybe they put immigrants in there, I don't know. But they're not collecting the rents on it, John. This is the thing. So all of these are going into default. They're all in going into um, bank repossession. Prices in Florida, they've dropped as well. California, a lot of people are leaving it because they can't afford to live there. Add me to the so list. One of the biggest indicators of an, an economic shift, a wind of change, would be watching what the real estate market do. I know for a fact that it's at least 6 7% down. Um, I follow a few people on Instagram that are saying, look, this house two years ago was this much, 900000 now it's down to seven sixty. So they've taken the job. And then he said, we're actually selling it under what they bought it in 2019. So that's one indication. Also, I saw another interesting graph, how they, how they um, in the stock market crash in the 1920s, the very, very famous one, um, they, they tracked the graph on how everything was climbing. There's a really steep rally. And then there was a, a, a little bit of a dip and then it climbed back up again. And then it was just a sheer Mount Everest drop. And that's when everything just dropped like that. And he says, if you overlay these two graphs, we're more or less exactly at that peak top now. So if we tie this in, what happened in the 20s was um, was devastating to the economy because, and why did it happen? It's because it was gold-backed. There wasn't a Federal Reserve that could just mm -hmm. go in there and back them up and, and throw all the money at them and say, how many trillions do you want? They had the banking that was still in place, but it wasn't that wasn't deployed at that moment in there. So they let it happen. The banks all, all lost the money. The people couldn't take it out. There was a series of other climatic events, which, you know, the dust balls across America, dust bowls. So the only thing that's going to stop at this time is if the if the countries do two or three different things. So one of them is backing up their economy with gold because, all right, at the moment, you can still cash in your dollars. I've got some dollars. I want some gold. You want to sell a gold for dollars? I'll take it. What's your deal? All right, like it. I've got gold. Got rid of those freaking dollars. Don't need them any, not much for not much longer. It's like when you go to an airport, you've been to Mexico, you just want to get rid of your pesos. You either give them away as a tip or you buy stuff you don't want or you, you get a really bad rate at the airport and you're happy. So the next thing is if the real estate market crashes, there's nothing to back that up with. And also we talked about that, but then we've got this BRICS economy. So now all of the BRICS economy, all the BRICS countries are all joined together. Saudi Arabia didn't re-sign that petroleum deal where they were paying for everything in the petrodollar. Right. So what are you talking about? How can you command the price of, the price of a barrel? It's going to be in Chinese um, yen. Or it's going to be in um in a in a currency in gold. I, I still think they might even actually just use that. One ounce is this much oil. Well, just so you know, David, just to your point, the BRICS is already now backed in 40% gold, 30% Russian, and 30% Chinese bonds, and maybe some iteration, I'm sure, of silver and other things. So, you know, they're they're ready to go. And they've got XRP as the digital ledger technology to underpin this in the new system. So this stuff is all connected. I'm glad you brought that up about the real estate market because a lot of my friends were like, hey, John, when should I buy real estate? You know, because they have currency and they have, you know, cryptos and metals and all that stuff. And I said, well, I'm telling, you know, if I were you, if I were in your position, what I would do is wait till January because just like in the crash of 08 internally here in America, the bailout, you really saw the bottom fall out of the housing market in that fall of 08 dovetailing into the first quarter of, of 2009, right? And so it's interesting you bring that up. Just to, give me a second here, because we have a guest next week, um, very highly anticipating Peter Schiff, who's a major Fox contributor and other major contributors. He has been saying what we have been saying in our camp for years, that you're going to see, and Lynette Zhang is saying this as well. She's actually saying 95% with cash, for those of us who have it, on residential real estate, because only people who are in our position are going to have it. Just like the Great Depression, there was opportunity. 1% of the population knew, anticipated, right or wrong, and capitalized. We're going to be that new 1%, the wealth of the wicked, right? Laid up for the righteous. And let's state another fact, David. This is important. We're not in a recession. 
we're in a depression because yeah. five or more quarters of negative GDP gross domestic product, according to Bill Holter, who knows what he's talking about, constitutes a recession. And I asked him that back in what, March of this year? So this started in 2022, just like Jim Willie pointed out, Ben Salman dropped the petrodollar actually in 2022. They just didn't announce it till this June. Everything is done, future proofs past. Now we're seeing the movie, if you like, play itself out for the public to see. Absolutely, John. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that because I actually been offered a few real estate deals. Yeah, but that's really cheap, Mahoney. I, you know, you know. I said no. Until January, I'm not touching anything in real estate. If it was a bit of land, as you know, and I like it, I think, well, all right, it's that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. But you know, buying prime stuff. Look at it. You know, this has gone up this many points in this many years. I'm like, mate, you don't understand what's coming. No. You might be waving around a lot of euros at me, and it's absolutely worthless. Right. Imagine when the power goes down and you can't use your credit card. You know, you're going to need to put fuel in your car. Cash is going to be good in that situation. And and junk so Eventually, when it has no value, you're going to need. You, you know, it doesn't matter if you've got five thousand dollars and somebody's got antibiotics. I don't need that. I'm. I've got a whole suitcase full of money. I don't need it. What else you got? You got a gun. You got some clean water. What about some uh, some other medication? Let's swap medication. Things like this will be important. I, I don't think it's going to get ap apocalyptic. I don't think we're going to hit that. I think God's going to no. always keep keep us in a more or less a straight and, and narrow, you know. But it it does need a, a a cleanup, and all of this wickedness that the U.S. dollars created. You know, you've got all the narcos sitting in Central America, hundreds of billions of dollars all stuffed in the basement and in the walls of villas, and you know, and what they've been doing formulating wars just so they can create more. We'll give them a bit of money and we'll give them some guns so they'll start a war here, but they won't know that we're actually giving their neighbors weapons. So, oh, they've got big guns. Well, now we need more guns. Let's get some more guns. Have you seen how many guns these guys have got? Let's get some more. <laughs> and who wins? It's the, uh, the arms manufacturers, which is usually most of these countries that are in uh, shoulder to shoulder with all of the cabals. So we're talking France, Germany, the USA, the UK, there's a few others sprinkled in there as well. Czech Republic makes a lot of weapons, but they never, they never seem to use them. They say, okay, you guys want to fight? Dick, we sell. We don't get. Well, but she, it's yeah. certainly Sorry, very interesting, very interesting last few weeks as we get up to this November date. And then, you know, I cannot predict what's going to happen next because, you know, it's just craziness. What do you mean there was a guy in the golf course with an AK? And nobody spotted him either. Mm -hmm. And then he just happened to be a really sympathetic Ukraine supporter and doesn't believe what Trump said. You know, right. come on, man. Get me a spoon and just try to spoon feed me a few more lies before we get to the election. Because there's exactly. a little bit of room for more before I start spinning them all out again. <laughs> well, also, barterability is going to be key too, David, going forward. Like, you know, you could take a, a I'm not going to say a bullet, basically. Back in the Wild Wild West, the shot class, you remember that term? That was yeah. that term came about by I found out from a historian. A, a somebody took an actual bullet, put it into a shot, and that's how they paid for the shot. And then that's they came up for shot glass. So you know, bullets will is metal, right? It's got it's got brass, it's got silver in it. It's a barterability yeah, instrument. And either you people be able to be creative in the ways in which they help each other. But um, on, from a faith perspective, we believe in our team that Agenda Twenty Five and Agenda Twenty Thirty have been canceled. That God is extenuating the timeline so that that his people can get to safe ground get out of the cities become their own central banks buy land food water source all that kind of stuff you got starlink on and on and on it goes right so you know he's he's giving his people time to get into position so we just need to just enjoy help each other we as greg manorino says are the currency of our talents and helping each other that's our greatest asset uh, we're doing our bit john and fairness how many recordings we've done over the years, I, I I don't even know how many I've done. I keep making it up some days. Welcome to show 532. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got in my car yesterday, and I thought, I looked at the odometer, and it was 17, 17, 17. But if you look at that in the digital display, I said, oh, that's something new. My <laughs> odometer's malfunctioning now. And then I kind of twisted my head around. I thought, well, that's a good sign, 17, 17, 17. Getting close, getting close, John. So we'll be back again in a month. We've come to the top of the hour, but is there anything else we've missed on tonight's show? I mean, I could we could go on and on, but I think that that gives enough 
information for people to process and marinate over and such. Um, as always, Dave, where can people find your work? Uh, you know what? I lost one website because I forgot to renew it. But you can find me on BitChute. You can find me on Instagram, Mahoney David G. Um, on X is the best one for me, really. And I do a free show. Oh, no, you know what, John? Telegram. Come and join the Telegram group because I do free shows twice a week where you can see the guests that we have on and all the intel from around the world, some crazy videos, a few laughs along the way. And um, we'll put the link down below so people can see it in the video. I forget. I always, I always forget about that because I'm kind of uh, trying to keep things from getting bigger. I'm happy with the amount I'm doing now, but there's always there's always room for one more. There's always room for one more. It's like the lifeboat situation. You know, yeah. I got an invite today from someone. I said, "All right, I'll squeeze you in next week." <laughs> more truth talkers. But yeah. thanks for thanks for having me on, John. And, oh, no. um, like, likewise, buddy. And, uh, you know, on our side, you know, our links on our channel. Uh, we do have some excellent gold vendors, gold and silver, precious metals uh, that we invite you to check out, obviously. And also foreign currencies. We always talk about bonds, some bonds, mm-hmm. Dinar, Dong, Venezuela Boulevard, the whole lot. Um, if you're interested in adding to your position or getting some, we'll leave that link below in the description. Look forward to seeing you again soon, brother. Appreciate you and uh, keep up the good work. Yeah. Godspeed, John. You keep up your amazing work too. He, for the audience, for the audience, he sends me stuff I don't understand half of it. And then he asks, <laughs> what does that mean? And he'll send a link because he, he's thinking, he can feel what I'm thinking. And before I'm about to say, well, what the hell does that mean? He goes back. So, John, thank you, brother, for having the patience of my lack of knowledge and some of the expertise areas that you seem to have a lot of knowledge about. But when I get it, I get it like, ah, got it now. Understand. We'll see you next month, everybody. Thanks for joining us. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.